Welcome back. Finally. Keepers of the flame. I am, um, I'm just doing a quick check-in. Because it's, get, it's getting a little more rough than we thought the new year would be. At least I, I knew it was coming, but like not in droves like this. So, I mean, we, we knew we were going to need a five-pointer this year. Let's buckle up, but oh my goodness. Okay, so um, just doing a collective check-in. How are you guys doing? Are you okay? You, you making it out there? You... <laughs> you staying in your cave? I'm staying in my cave. Um, I I've been purchasing decks and having fun and and doing my thing in my cave. Um, yeah, I think we're just gonna roll with these punches because I don't really feel like uh, talking much about it right now because I saw it coming and it hit and I was like. Here it is. Yeah. We're just going to roll with the punches. Um, it, it is what it is. Um, please make sure you're checking your local laws, your um, state laws. Uh, federal laws are important too, but check your state laws. Um, as much as we'd like to think that the women's movement is progressing, it's actually not in a legal stance. They're backtracking. So before 1993, it was not illegal to rape your spouse. I don't care if you I'm using the R word. Um, uh, they said that in 1993, that even though you were married, uh, it's not okay to rape your wife. And now, um, they're working to backtrack that. So, I don't know if that's a, gee, maybe we shouldn't get married thing, or, um, yet another control mechanism. Not sure. Dividing forces come in all different shapes and sizes, right? So, um, just be leery of that. Be wary of it. Um, the most powerful sacred bond on the planet has been desecrated. It has been that way for a very, very long time. That's why nobody can get their needs met. Um, nothing is held sacred. Uh, so just be mindful of that when engaging with legality of things uh just be mindful of those things when you're moving forward and progressing i'm not saying you can't have romantic relationships that's not it at all oh my gosh some people can make it work and kudos to them that's freaking amazing um uh, freaking rock on that's awesome um and some of us are kind of out here like so <laughs> So, um, let's get into some decks. Let's do a collective. Just because, um, yeah, I think we need to do a collective. Who's calling me? This, um, I got a really cool, beautiful, amazing deck. And then I got a really cool, amazing box to hold the deck. Um, so this is, this is the deck. Okay. So, and then I got, the, I got another deck by the same person for clarify. And that is this deck. It is, okay. So this one is called Last. I hate when I do, like, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I, oh, okay. The Prisma Visions Tarot by James R. Eads. Smart ass. So, there's a beautiful little poem inside the box. This is this is the book. It, it's very, very well thought out. Um, very Van Gogh-y feeling. And you'll see that in the cards in just a hot second. But um, this is my, my new, like, favorite obsessed over deck. So uh, this little poem he wrote on the inside. It says, the fool believes he is someone. He is not wading through waters for something unsought. 
The magician plays tricks in the dark of the night, refracting the light all of all future sight. A set of cards to tease your mind, revealing past, present, and future combined. Okay. Beautiful. Absolutely amazing. Love this deck. Kind of obsessed. Gonna leave the book out. So this is the book that you get on the inside. Okay. And then this one is the Cosma Visions Oracle for my clarifier deck. Very cool. I got to keep the little map out for references because he he's very uh, similar in his workings and the decks. I don't know if you can see. I've used this. You can tell. But uh, it's so gorgeous. I freaking love it. Oh, and this guy. It's heavy. Hey, baby. Okay. Leave that to marble and this is agate. So this is how the deck looks on the side. And there's the Van Gogh feel. Very um, little strokes. It's really amazing um i've been using this since i bought it months and months and months ago uh, um so yeah this is kind of my my daily deck that i typically use not a hundred percent of the time but typically so what is cosmos I have to say for the collective And if I remember correctly, there are no reverses in this deck, so they might come out reversed. I'll let you know. But no reverse in these decks. Okay, okay that's it. All right, what do we need to know? Okay, it's gonna be okay. Okay, so those are still down. Okay, death. Well, we knew that. Okay, the ten of chalices, but that was in reverse, and the nine of swords was in reverse. Okay. Okay. So we are transforming. How we do that romantical ten of cups cups thing and we're losing sleep over it okay i'm gonna have to rebirth it um there's the ten of cups by the way this is this is a really the this particular suit in this deck is got some really cool progression to it I'm going to show you that card again. I'm going to show you that card again. You see the little boy with his cape and his superhero mask? Battling the, <laughs> the white gander. Okay, that's cute. Okay. I did discover recently that some people have a deathly fear of geese. I grew up around geese, so... And I tell it to fuck off. Anyway, bottom or upside or upside down. So we have the four of wands. Okay. That's right with the ten of chalices. The ten of wands. Joe, Joe, Joe. That was in reverse. But we're doing this upright. Wheel of fortune. That's upright. Star in reverse. But everything's going upright. Judgment. Ten of swords. Oh, 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 oh. Progression. See? what I mean like this is really cool so you get this one and then this one <sighs> there we go see I can't breathe <laughs> sorry I really like that <laughs> this is such a brilliant well thought oh three of swords three of swords Okay, so that's that's what fell out. Those three were 
turned face up, these were down. And the bottom of the deck, Roots of the Reed, Nine of Pentacles, Three of Wands, and the Eight of Swords by a Priestess, and the Four of Pentacles, and the Queen of Wands. Okay. Is that enough? God, I hope so. I'd be here all night. Where are we at? Okay, we're good. So. This is a mental game. It's, we're trying to heal it, but it's a mental battle right now. Ten of Cups. Well, we started with Death, then we got the Ten of Cups and the, the Nine of Swords. So rebirthing how to find emotional fulfillment i know the ten of cups is traditionally you know with that tenth cup being sorry i think we talked about this there's going to be background noises because the animals so <laughs> so when we met the death of whatever relationship we birthed something new with the ten of chalices here and the nine of swords is we're maybe we're not getting it mentally correct we can feel it but we're not doing it mentally correctly and you've got the celebration here with the ten of wands now i know the ten of wands is supposed to mean a lot too much yep. So, he's carrying, you can kind of see him in the background there. He's carrying the bricks, but there's something enchanting in the forest that he's missing. He's not seeing it. He's focused on the ground because he's got a job to do. But he's missing the enchantment of the forest that he's wading through right now. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. So, we're missing something. I'm not sure what it is, but it is on the Wheel of Fortune. <sighs> Look at that. Two snakes and a peacock. So. So if it's what it's saying to me, is if it doesn't happen this way, we're not going to get it right. Healing with the star um, purpose, maybe um, looking to your birth chart for some healing, some understanding. Yeah, really beautiful, meaningful card with her. It's almost like there's, it's supposed to be water, but it feels like it's some sort of fiery flower. And she's falling downward. into what looks like a frying pan full of flour. And it looks like she's jumping willingly. It's, it's beautiful. Okay. Okay. So I wonder if this is, you know, it's supposed to happen this way in order to find healing you know, that death card is right above this star card. If you uh, out of the frying pan, into the fire, or into the frying pan, so we can go into the fire. I don't know. There's judgment, divine judgment, walking through a portal, deciphering discernment if we're supposed to walk through that door or not. Ten of swords, enlightenment, getting to the end of that gander, but there's the wheel again. Getting back on that wheel. <laughs> Only to be met by three of swords.
little buddy gave his life so we could get through the winter and eat. That's what I'm getting. I know. Don't come for me, vegans. Don't fucking come for me. Just, that's the only thing I can think of. It's harsh, cold winter, and now you've got some grub. Okay. I'd eat it. I love venison. It's delicious. Especially when somebody went out and fucking busted their ass hunting it for you. Okay. So, then we've got the Queen of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, the High Priestess, the Eight of Swords, Three of Wands, and the Nine of Pentacles. Okay. I will say I'm super excited we end up sovereign at the end of this. So, the Queen of Wands is... She's kind of the warrior queen, right? Swords, she sits on her throne and makes um, cutthroat decisions, if you will. But Queen of Wands, she's in the fire. She's in the pits. Tossing them about. Breathing her fire <laughs> into the ethos. And she, it's peculiar because this looks like she might be in some sort of pond area and it kind of gives way to almost a mermaid feel which is weird for the queen of wands but there it is kind of sort of looks like she's being transformed into something there it kind of gives me like this is gonna sound really bad and i did not see the new movie it gives me little mermaid vibes like she's and then there's that pure white flower there so her intentions are pure and she looks like she's almost transforming into something else to suit her desires of course piles so it might be a transformation of sorts from water nonetheless is what it looks like I don't know maybe I'm um... Just saying. Four of Pentacles. This guy's sitting under his tree holding on to you. Resources. Know what you have. Take tally. And again, it's not just monetary. It's everything else. It's food. It's um, relationships, connections, anything that serves a value anything it doesn't have to be monetary um you know make sure that your vehicle is up and running for the winter make sure that um you have enough um warm clothes and if you do have enough you know this is this is telling me like even though like he's looking like he doesn't have enough look at all these magical little fruits up here so either set the example that this is how you proceed or scatter some seeds and help others learn to how to replenish their own how to grow your own apple trees, fruit trees, whatever this is. Like he's being stubborn with his resources, but don't be stubborn with your knowledge on how to, how you got there. Does that make sense? All right, moving to the high priestess. Done, done, done. Pomegranate, Persephone, the underworld meets the upper world meets the cosmos. And things are the way they should be at natural and she split the pomegranate in two here it looks like she's left one it looks like a watery surface there and she's got the other on her hand okay again understanding how to intuitively Bring your gifts and your talents and your know-how and your abilities to the table. Your purpose. 
not just, you know, what the world tells you, but this is your intuition, your kind of like your vital life force energy coming to fruition and under, you begin to understand what serves, what doesn't serve, that this half a pomegranate is going to be more than enough for you because you've got your seeds are in there and you can germinate those seeds and grow a whole nother tree. Also, pomegranate is, might have been, uh, or at least it's in one version of the story of um, how Hades trapped Persephone in the underworld. So maybe be leery of getting caught in traps. Understand that um, I mean, if you've ever seen a pomegranate, it's, they're, they're lovely. They really are. They're beautiful. And maybe that's my Scorpio psyllium. But they very, you just want to stare at them. They're so beautiful. Um, <laughs> that might just be my weird glitch. But it's, it's a very romantic fruit. It very much is. I mean, if there was, I mean, everybody loves strawberries and whatever else, but for Valentine's Day, I'm like, let's break out the pomegranate. So it's a, and it's very good for your heart and your blood flow, veins and arteries. So maybe realize that uh, you probably, or we have more power than we're allowed to tap into when you start recognizing that and reading that for what it is and dive in then you've got your eight of swords being protected or imprisoned here maybe this is a like you're in the underworld it is winter you're in the underworld and mm, mm, ain't nothing moving but you got your little buddy on your shoulder there's a little buddy and you can see my camera's being weird. I don't know what's wrong with that. But there it is. So no forward movement as of yet. You're still like right now. Or we are as a collective. Three of Wands. Finding the desire though. Finding the wants. Finding the little fires that, that light us up. And the Nine of Pentacles to keep us sovereign. Da, 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 da. I like that outcome. I love that outcome. Okay. I don't feel like we need to clarify. I think this is definitely a winter read. Definitely. We're just, you know, dying and coming back to life. Figuring things out. And how we're going to work this whole interaction thing. With relationships, with our resources. You know, Venus just finished her Kazemi. We're trying to, like, I didn't, was it Mercury or Mars? I think it was Mars that finished it. But those two forces, either Mercury or Mars, I don't recall. Anyway, so they both finished their Kazemi. So both of those collective wheels right now, maybe it was Mars. I feel like it's Mercury though. I feel like it was Mercury. We're figuring that wheel out. How we got through. In different resources that we need to. Because Venus is also resources. Mars is how you move forward in action. And right now we're like. I don't want to. But you're finding your desire here. Um. We got six minutes. We're going to do... I'm not going to do any clarifiers because I'm not confused about any of this. Um, This is the Queen Mob Oracle by Tess Whitehurst. Amazing, 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 beautiful. Sorry, gents, but you have feminine in you too. Right now, we're struggling a little bit. Let's see what we... What advice... Queen Mob Dark Hats. Forgive me if I mispronounce that. It's M A B. Ooh. A 
winged messenger and renew thy force. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ah, oh, jeez. Pale white fire. That card won't leave me alone. <laughs> okay, 14. Oh, Lord. It, then maybe this is just not. I don't know. That I, I don't know what to do about that. Well, I mean, I do, but I... <laughs> she always seems to end up at the bottom of the deck for me. This particular situation, endeavor... Sorry, my bad. Ooh. I'm not sure. I did not premeditate this. Did not think about that at all. John, John, John. Let's see how I can get this gravy going on. Not there. Not even close. Okay. Okay. For further insight into how this message applies, look deeply at the luminous being here portrayed. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Ready? Shake your tail feather. Okay. <laughs> Imagine for a moment that she indeed lives. She is near to you, although not visible with your physical eyes. She does not employ human language, and yet she has something significant to communicate. Close your eyes, relax your body, and feel her presence. Once you believe you can sense her, or once you, your imagination has even slightly conjured her up, open your eyes and read on. This ethereal spirit arrives in response to a life experience that reverberates throughout lifetimes, planes, dimensions, and multiple directions of time. If you listen to her silence and feel her closeness, you will receive a clue as to what this means for you. Below, you will find some possibilities to help illuminate her message, which is actually a reminder of something you already know. You may be healing an issue that has been with you through multiple lifetimes. You may be encountering an ancestral issue or another ancient pattern of energy that has pulled you into its sway. Your current circumstances could relate to your sacred lineage, a spiritual vow, practice, or talent you have carried forth into this lifetime from a distant past. You may be engaging with someone you previously knew by another name and face at a time when you also had different name and a face. It is possible that you are fulfilling your destiny or now have the opportunity to change your fate into destiny. It is also possible that you are in a portal of transformation. The actions you take or don't take now will reverberate for many beings from many eons and many dimensions. That what feels familiar to you here, what feels like something you've been waiting for or expecting, what feels like something you've always known. Did any of the above examples stand out for you? Did the words visibly light up? Or did they particularly? Or did any particular sounds resonate in your mind? If you aren't sure of the winged messenger's significance yet, don't worry. That's why she's here. Close your eyes again. Breathe and relax. Listen. Feel. Hear. Go beyond the linear analysis and intellectualizing and allow yourself to sense a deeper and more resonant spiritual truth. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, till next time, keep your flame.